These two images were taken at 85 millimeters f2. One image came from a lens that costs $2,600 and the other image came from a lens that costs $500. Can you tell the difference? And if you can, is that difference worth $2,000? Imagine capturing breathtaking photos. Imagine being able to create bokeh that is beyond anything that you've ever thought possible. With the RF 85mm f1.2, you can create some of the most stunning images. Images that will leave your clients speechless and in awe. Being able to capture these sorts of images comes at a steep price, however. Is being able to capture this image at f1.2 worth $2,000 more than this image taken at f2? How about being able to record this video versus this video? Today, I will be showing you some of my images captured this very morning with this premium L-series lens. I'll also be showing you some footage taken with this lens. Additionally, I will be showing you images taken from this little lens, the little brother, the RF 85mm f2. I encourage you to take a good look at the images and the videos. I will display the images without revealing which image came from what lens, so you can go ahead and take a guess. My hope is that you can make a better informed decision with your hard-earned money. After watching this video, you'll be able to answer the question, is the F1.2 variant worth $2,000 more than the $500 F2 version? You'll ask yourself, do I need to create the smoothest bokeh my portfolio and my clients have ever seen? Will my clients even notice? Heck, after seeing the examples throughout this video, you may even ask yourself, what do I have to do? What do I have to sell to be able to afford this premium lens? Stay tuned all the way to the end to see some of the most magnificent bokeh bulbs that you have ever laid your eyes on. Bokeh bulbs. Bokeh bulbs. Bokeh bulbs. The RF 85mm f1.2 lens has a minimum focus distance of 2.79 feet. This lens allows you to capture intricate details with stunning clarity even without it being a macro lens. Before I show you the next set of images and video, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. It's free and it helps get this video out to more creatives like you and me. Thanks for that. Getting back to the images, if you look at this image here, I was not able to get as close as I could with the F2 variant. The F2 version has a minimum focus distance of 1.15 feet. That's an entire, that's a little bit more than 12 inches shorter than the F1.2 version. And that's because the F1.2 is not a macro and has a much longer minimum focus distance, almost 12 inches more. Here are two more sample images taken of the exact same subject. You'll notice that both images have some fantastic detail and some wonderful compression. The F1.2 version has a nine blade circular aperture that produces beautifully soft backgrounds, making your subjects pop and creating a captivating depth of field effect. The F2 version also creates some nice depth of field, but it doesn't compare anything to the 1.2 version. Even in low light situations, the wide F1.2 maximum aperture of this lens excels, delivering impressive performance and allowing you to capture stunning images with ease. To further enhance your shooting experience, the 85mm F1.2 lens incorporates air sphere coating, reducing flaring and ghosting to deliver clear, contrast-rich images even in challenging lighting conditions. This lens, however, is not compact and it's a little chunky. Weighing approximately 2.63 pounds, when you add the weight of the camera body, you are easily over 4 pounds, making it a bit of a workout anytime that you take it out. 
The 85mm f1.2 lens does go well with the R5 though. I feel it to be nicely balanced. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is the autofocus and the focus speeds. Take a look at some of this footage here. Here you can see that I set up a control test to see some of the focus racking. I love a good focus rack, especially when it's nice and smooth. The f1.2 is definitely more snappy, and the f2 version is a little bit slower. Which focus rack do y'all prefer? Make sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments. So here is the question. Should you spend your hard-earned money on the f1.2? Well, if you're a professional photographer that does portraits and headshots, it's a resounding yes. If you're a hobbyist with a large budget, then absolutely my answer is yes. This lens provides some of the best images that I have ever seen. But if you're just starting out and you're looking into getting into the 85 millimeter focal length, then the F2 version is plenty of lens. The F2 has image stabilization, which the F1.2 doesn't, that makes it awesome for walking around and everyday shooting. Plus, you get some macro capabilities that lets you create some awesome detail shots, and it's only $500. It's almost too good to be true. Macro capabilities, image stabilization, and awesome bokeh at F2, it's a spectacular deal. Truthfully, I let this F2 version pay for the F1.2 version. And that's how I've been telling everyone to pay for these premium L-series lenses buy a fast budget prime and let the low budget lens earn its keep and help you save and earn for the premium glass it took me about six months and maybe about five jobs to finally save up enough money to get this lens here listen honestly there is a lot of opportunity for creators like you and me out there right now the Canon 85mm f1.2 L lens is a remarkable lens and in time it will be an excellent addition to your kit. Its exceptional image quality, wide aperture performance make it a great tool for capturing extraordinary moments. But unless you're a full-time pro, this lens can wait. But if you're watching this video and you already own the f2 version and you're ready to elevate your photography and want the best of the best, the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L-series lens is here to unlock new creative possibilities and inspire you to push the boundaries of your creative work. Make sure to check the links in the description for the latest pricing. As of this recording, the 85 f1.2 is a couple hundred dollars off and so is the 85 f2. If you have any questions regarding these lenses, please ask them in the comments below. At the moment, I'm answering any and all questions. Or if you want to be friends on Instagram and TikTok, make sure to follow me on those platforms as well. If you're like me and you like to invest in only the best of the best, then the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L lens is just that. The best of the best. If you like this review, I know that you're going to like the one I did about the 28 to 70 f2. You can check it out right here. Until next time, adios. What's going on, everyone? Thanks so much for staying all the way to the end. If you're new here, welcome. I usually like to reserve the last few moments of my videos to catch you up on some of the happenings in my world. During the past week, I crossed the 4,000 watch hour mark, and I also crossed 900 subs. 
Thank you so much to all of you that stick around all the way to the end, that give thumbs up, and all of the people that have subscribed. I'm truly humbled and I appreciate every single one of you. It got me thinking about what's next for me and what's next for this channel. I'm still working my way through my thoughts on that question. Of course, I will continue to post weekly videos, but I want at least one of those videos to be more how-to videos. I have asked a few of my subscribers and some have mentioned that they would like to see more content about how to make money with a camera. So moving forward, I will be making at least one video a month around that topic. Well, that's it for me this week. Keep an eye out for my community posts where I give y'all an opportunity to provide me with some video ideas. I'm very active on all the social media platforms. So make sure to say hello there as well. Subscribe if you haven't and stop by the comments to say hello. Listen, if you like this video, I know that you're gonna like this video right here. Until next week, adios.